Welcome back to Making a Latex Corset with Catasta Charisma, Part 2. In this part, I am solely concentrating on the two front panels of the corset and shall be painting them in liquid latex. The design of the decoration is partially influenced by Tiffany lampshades, and the corset will form part of an overall, highly decorated outfit, which I also hope to demonstrate the full making of in future videos. While working, I have a colour printout of all the sections of the corset that require painting, which I can refer to, as well as line drawings upon the pattern templates of where all the blocks of colour fall. The painting consists of a handful of colours broken down into two applications. The first one is titanium white, deep cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson and an emerald green, while the second is buff titanium, lemon yellow, orange, cadmium red, teal and black. As the painting progresses you will see me make up each of these colours and place them when not in use to one side in order of application. The latex I am using is actually rubber that has been pulverised, dissolved and dispersed in water with some ammonia added as a preservative. It has also been treated, vulcanised, so that once the water and ammonia evaporate and the latex solidified into rubber it remains a stable product with all the same properties as rubber sheeting. To make the individual pots of colour I add acrylic paint. We can only go so far in how much acrylic paint we can add to latex before we undermine the properties inherent in latex, but in small amounts it is fine, otherwise more water-based paints such as poster paint can be used, but more ideally we should mix the latex with powdered pigments. The colour produced when mixed will be significantly lighter than once it has dried. The white colour of the latex that pales any colour added to it, except those which are already very pale, will slowly become transparent and have a slight amber-like tinge. The colour of the mixed in paint pigment will then reveal itself as well as how opaque the final colour will be. Opacity is very much dependent on what kind of paint pigment you have used and its ratio to latex and this can only be determined through making up experimental test batches and learn through experience. The application of the latex is, in the case for the style being produced here, simply done by dipping a stick, a skewer, into the latex and transferring it to the rubber sections. Sometimes it is left as individual blobs and sometimes spread a little more thinly. By and large it is a basic printing method If you remember back to the last video, I laminated the smoother polished side of the rubber sheeting to the rubberized fabric, leaving the more matte and rough underside exposed as the outside of the garment. This is the surface I am painting upon. The reason for this is that the more rougher texture of the underside of the sheeting then has a larger surface area for the latex to adhere to. This makes the bond between the applied latex and the sheeting permanent. This equally works for stretch garments. If the latex had been applied to the smoother polished surface, it would sit upon it as a skin. We can't really trust the bond for skin tight garments, but it isn't too bad for looser styles of fit. Any non painted and so revealed areas of the original rubber sheeting can have a duller appearance to the applied latex areas. This in itself can be an exploited effect, otherwise, if you wish for it to be smoother and more polished, you have to apply latex over it, whether this is the same colour as the sheeting, as I finally do with the black, or whether it is just the latex by itself. Once the latex has dried, it has become rubber, and will share all the same properties as the rubber sheeting. Length of drying time can vary but it is typically best to wait 24 hours before doing any extra work such as piecing seams, or as I'm about to demonstrate, incorporate the corset's busk. But for now, just enjoy watching the painting unfold.
On these front sections of the corset, the centre front edge has been extended and this has no latex applied to it. This area will fold under the work and trap between itself the busk. Taking the female busk, I mark out the individual areas where the clasps are located and cut slots. The busk incidentally has been bonded to a flat busk to make it more rigid. On the back of the work and across both sides of the female busk, I spray a webbing glue. This is a super strong glue designed for all kinds of materials and is cheap and easily available. I picked mine up from a local discount store. The clasps of the busk are inserted through the slots from behind and the extension folded over the busk to the underside and pressed to bond. Any residual glue is cleaned off using a solvent. The clasps are then positioned over the opposite front section to locate the points where the male busk prongs will be inserted. Their positions marked and checked against the actual male busk. Holes are then punched through the rubber layers and the male prongs inserted just to check at this stage that the holes are sufficiently large enough and that the female and male busks do truly align up. The back area is marked out for where glue is to be applied. Again I use the webbing spray to coat the back of the section and both sides of the busk. I then reinsert the prongs and close over the extension area. Press and clean down any residual glue. The front sections are complete for now. Thanks for watching and join me next time where I'll be painting all the remaining sections and incorporating the eyelets into the back.